Hello, and welcome to the finale of So You Think You Can Fan and Slash Week. As always, I'm your host, Sergio, alongside Matt. It is just the two of us today, because everyone's been beamed. Killed. Destroyed. Yes, uh, th- uh, we are recording this uh, day of, as some circumstances made us record it the day of. Uh, well, that's not a problem, as it will be getting to you um, on this day, on Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. But a very special Valentine's Day to those of us listening from the UK. Uh, South Africa. Yeah, and also South Africa, but specifically um, uh, the UK, since you guys uh, made us spike. Uh, o- over the over the night, I hope you all are enjoying it. Uh, for our friends across the pond, and to- today we have our fan fiction that we wrote ourselves, our own slapstick of horrific proportions. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's something else. It really is. I would like to start with a disclaimer that we aren't racist. You sh- if you if you've been if you've been following along for the some fifty so episodes we've done, you should already know this. And everything that we do here is parody and humor. You may be wondering, well, well, what kind of what kind of racism have you guys concocted for us today? Well, you're about to see. Matt, would you like to narrate? <clears throat> I would love to. A large American Huey helicopter roared in, going swa 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 into the mystical communist land of Vietnam in the mid-60s. Aboard this massive delivery platform for freedom and American diplomacy was a ragtag group of incredibly talented soldiers. Piloting this beautiful machine was a man who had forgotten his birth name after nearly a decade of non-stop fighting in Nam and goes by the name Major Bubba. As he flew the helicopter, his 18-inch diameter biceps glistened with sweat, as does a Krispy Kreme donut fresh out of the oven at a Krispy Kreme factory where they make the Krispy Kreme donuts. His abs rippled like a wave in poor weather out during the high tide somewhere in southern Florida or perhaps even the Gulf of Mexico. Unlikely to be the second one, however, because Mexico isn't American. He was six foot nine, whiter than someone from Finland who was crossed with 16 generations of Vikings who went on nothing but pole on 4chan for days days at a time. In the passenger compartment was the rest of his team, two men who went by Big Hoss and Captain Cock. Big Hoss was a six foot six African American gentleman whose skin was the color of midnight ash. Captain Cock was a 100% red-blooded Apache warrior, his skin as golden brown as a fresh Thanksgiving turkey basted and cooked at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for six hours on Thanksgiving Day, being served with buttered sweet corn as well as freshly mashed potatoes served alongside some wonderful handcrafted gravy. Grandma's recipe. Sitting underneath 18 flags of the Native Americans. There was not a single scrap of shirt left for any of the three soldiers, their bare chests shining in the passing sun. Big Hoss was beautifully clean-shaven, like a freshly mowed pasture, only the pasture had no grass because of the intense drought affecting the farmers' livelihoods and marriages. While Major Bubba hadn't seen nor heard of manscaping in his life, like a not freshly mowed pasture where cows are able to eat as they please. Captain Cock, meanwhile, had the face of Harry Truman tattooed into his chest, while a phenomenally exaggerated bald eagle stretched majestically across his broad and muscular back. 
Truman was winking in his tattoo, almost as if his charismatic face was pardoning each soldier from the intense, unrestrained war crimes they all have been committing in the last few years. Suddenly, on their helicopter trip, three sexily clad, yet equally threatening, but even more equally sexy, communist activists initiated missile fire against them from an AA platform. In a frightening and sexy blaze of glory, the helicopter burned and blasted through a Vietnamese forest. Spiraling out of control, the three men inside sexily held on for dear life and gripped each other's arms with manly abandon. Suddenly, Major Bubba saw that they had blown through the forest and were careening into a Vietnamese orphanage kindergarten birthing hut combo. And that wasn't sexy at all. With his unfathomable helicopter skill, Major Bubba manually flipped the Sioux helicopter 30 feet in the air, bailing out with his fellow sexy and chapless men in the process to shield two beautiful minority women and their 47 Vietnamese schoolchildren from the debris. Would you like to be Captain Cock, Sergio? <clears throat> it would be my American duty to be Captain Cock. Are you unharmed? <laughs> Captain Cock rumbled to the Vietnamese people, already on the lookout for the communist menace that surrounded them unseen. In return, the school children coursed some kind of Vietnamese statement of terror and thanks. Would you also like to be Big Hoss, Sergio? Jesus Christ. Jason Bourne. They've been communized. Big Hoss shouted out as he saw a small school child pick up two AK-47s in his hands and fired them until their clips were empty and pinged out on the ground. Ducking for cover, Big Hoss, Major Bubba, and Captain Cock picked up every innocent in their way to stow them to safety. Then, using their combined powers of manifest destination, they joined hands in spirit to shine a beacon of free market enterprise into the immediate vicinity. At least 3,000 Spec Ops Viet Cong fell out of the trees with their beautifully colored kami eyes, seared into horny blindness by the power of the three soldiers. The young boy who had tried to kill the heroes, then seeing the error of his ways, attempted to atone by committing suicide with a suicide bomber vest. He tried to shout Allahu Akbar and detonate the C4, but realized that he only spoke Vietnamese and was sad. Suddenly, Big Hoss rose up behind him, his shiny black and almost oiled chest glistening in the sun. Using his strong, heister hands, he wrenched the vest from the boy and let it explode like a Davy Crockett some 3,000 feet in the air, like that one scene hidden in Hodeo Kojima's hit masterpiece, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Listen, little boy, there ain't no need for that. From now on, I want you to spread freedom and love wherever you go. Got it? Big Hoss said, a grand smile upon his face. The little boy smiled in return, learning to speak English from sheer willpower and amazement, shouting, Thanks, Big Hoss! And ran to be <laughs> with the rest of the Vietnamese gathered there, where they simultaneously said in perfect English with no accent. Thank you, Team Turbo. Team Turbo then saluted the evening sun in the direction of America as they briskly walked back to their hut base in a nearby mountain range. It was late in the evening when they arrived and no food was left over in their water-cooled storage. Captain Cock immediately left to kill at least 18 communist boars for their meal that night. Suddenly, Major Bummer 
rolled up behind Big Boss like an Apache attack helicopter in the Middle East and whispered in his ear, I think it's time I invoked some manifest destinational. And he flexed his ass and thigh muscles to shred his flimsy garments, revealing a massive and erect 11.33 inch American cock that would put even George Washington to shame. Without waiting for any response, Bubba ass blasted Big Hoss with his ascended Washington tear cock straight from rectum to belly. The rapidly changing air pressure from the thrust exploded the wooden hut wall in front of the two men, exposing the mega colon cataclysm Major Bubba had unleashed upon Big Hoss. Big Hoss cried out the lyrics to Fortunate Son as his guts were being rearranged like the colonial powers rearranged the borders of Big Hoss's homeland mass. Africa, in the colonization of the African countries of the 1800s. Bubba was fueled with pure Zulu fury. He was going to breed Hoss hard and hard and hard, filling him deep, 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 deep with all of his little Bubbas. Animalistic grunts echoed throughout the night as the humping went on, sweat being flung from their bodies in rhythm with their American passion. Finally, after several long and sexually uncomfortable moments of body slapping against Buddy. Major Bubba bubbified Big Hoss's hoss hole with his colonizing seed, ending their sudden moment of passion with an equally sudden climax. His little soldiers stampeded into his huts, pillaged them, and raped his women. And you may be asking, what the fuck are you referring to? Well, I'm specifically referring to Bubba's little Bubba, raiding through Hoss's anus, into his guts, and up into his stomach. Big Hoss's abs expanded outwards from the all-American fire hose being blasted into his guts, sending his stomach outwards like a landmass, experiencing continental drift. His eyes widened, the thought in there, but that's what I imagined. His eyes widened, and before any time to recuperate could pass, Captain Cock fell in from the ceiling, destroying another significant portion of the hut. Bubba! What are you fuck are you doing to Big Hoss? <laughs> Captain Cock roared into the night, seeing Big Hoss nearly incapacitated on the ground, like a beta male who had just been pegged by his alpha fitness GF. His butthole gushing like old faithful. Major Bubba stood there with his cock coated in two of the three colors of the red, white, and blue. Uh, I'm sorry, Captain Cock. I, uh, I just couldn't. Couldn't what? Control yourself from usurping ass from poor Hoss? I think it's time for me to take back some ass for the white man. Suddenly, Captain Cock, nothing personnel behind Major Bubba, and with powers only known to the 17 generations of his Native American ancestors, emulsified his rugged military pants and underwear into his American Indian spirit. Then, it was revealed that he had a 15.65 inch spirit cock, which he had replaced his real cock from birth with. Better pucker that butter boy hole, Bubba. Apache doesn't wet his stone. Captain Cock muttered before firmly grasping Bubba's behind and ramming his head into the last remaining wall of the hut. This effectively trapped Major Bubba in place, while Captain Cock aggressively and ferociously made an assault on little Big Bubba. The sound of slapping, clapping, clopping, and more than a bit of schlopping 
pounded through the night like Indians on horseback. Captain Cock in this one action got revenge for a hundred years of Indian oppression. His major first class meat rod, soldier boy tellemed, Bubba's bum hole like a wounded knee. Bubba shed a trail of tears, as if Andrew Jackson himself was fucking him in the ass as if he was the Native American. But even if you think about it, Captain Cock was like a Native American Andrew Jackson. He was the Indian getting fucked over, his land stolen, his wigwam burned to the ground and shuffled into a reservation where he could steal thousands from dumb Americans in a casino. In the middle of Captain Cock Apache helicoptering on Major Bubba, Big Hossel woke from his anally imposed incognizance and spent no time considering his next action, running out and turbo blasting his phenomenal 18.001 inch fat black cock through his rock solid 60s jeans and straight into Major Bubba's open and accepted mouth hole. The force of 18 and 1 and 1,000th unique inches of clean-shaven BBC entering Major Bubba's throat forced the wooden hut wall he'd been trapped into to violently explode outwards as Bubba's throat bulged gratuitously. Captain Cock and Big Hoss then proceeded to double-team Major Bubba, like the Allies and Russell double-teamed the Axis, except not remotely similar and with entirely different nationalities involved. And by double-teamed, I mean seriously spit-roasted that cracker with their spits like he was a fine-ass chicken. In mere moments, both Captain Cock and Big Hoss were reaching the limits of what Major Bubba's body could deliver to them. Captain, Captain Cock, is it time for, you know what? <laughs> You're also Captain Cock, Sergio. Oh, yes, my little hossy honcho hack. I think it is. Captain Cock said, as he suddenly lurched to his right and down, grasping Major Bubba's leg to flip him 90 degrees in a rotation, landing with both of their left sides on the ground, cock still firmly entrenched within Bubba. This released Big Hoss's Hoss Maker from Bubba's gullet, but it wouldn't stay unused for long. During the entire ordeal, Major Bubba's 11.33 inch American cock had returned had reattained fully erect status. Getting down on his left side, back facing Bubba, and front facing Cock. Ha suddenly and incredibly threw himself with his ass straight onto Bubba's dick. At the same time, Captain Cock thrusted with the hormonal instincts of his last 17 fathers, forcing a chain reaction of kinetic energy, jumping from cock to ass to cock to ass, sending Big Hoss barreling around with his cock, arranged to be shoved straight into Captain Cock's admiral ass. Once it was achieved, a light from the heavens shone down on the three men. It had been done. They had completed it. It was finished. All had not been for naught. For it was Team Turbos, Ouroboros, Gachi, Terminal Integration, and it had been completed. In that same instant, Every single communist in the country dropped what they were doing, as well as their pants, and started aggressively spreading the power of American sexuality to every individual in sight. As they derobed, they dubiously devoured rectums in cocks to such an extent that hadn't been seen since the great armistice anal annihilation of 1918. Staining the French flag white for the first time before being kept as their number one flag for any usage in warfare for the modern day. Asses eaten, buttholes borked, cock 
Scream, dicks destroyed, and enemies, animas eradicated as the cum fountain quickly spread across the Eastern European and Asian countries. They fucked and fucked and fapped so hard that they restarted capitalist economies, instilled proper taxation policies, and removed nationwide health care. Because we don't stand for that commie garbage. And then, for the first time in the history of Earth, all was at peace. And that was Deep in the Valley. Um, I'd say on read, it wasn't as hilarious as only in San Francisco. It was, I, 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 I still like it. I think it's funny. Just not I think you know. it's uh, I think it's because we wrote it last night that it's not as funny as Only in San Fran. Although I certainly agree that Only in San Fran has a, a something something so special to it. it it's it, it got a certain magic that can never be replicated. Mm-hmm. It's like my uh, that one crossover fic I did. I'd have to agree. I think it um I don't know. Only a San Fran is just so unique. Uh, I hope I did a good job conveying the American spirit of this fan fiction. Yes. Hoorah. We could probably reread this one for 4th of July, to be honest. <laughs> we could make a sequel. We could. We could. We should. We should do that. Is there, <clears throat> is there another American conflict fl- 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 we can lampoon? The American Civil War. Yeah. Well, I hope everybody had fun like, listening. Y- what? Hold on. You know, you know, Abe Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. No. You've never heard of that book? Nope. Oh, okay. Well, well, just 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 some background. What I'm trying to reference is that there is a book called Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. That's a uh, it's an AU where vampires exist, obviously, and a vampire hunter enlists a uh, young Abraham Lincoln to his, you know, say to kill vampires. So it's like, you know, obviously it's, it's like a biography of Abraham Lincoln's life. But if he was hunting vampires, he was ending <laughs> slavery and being based. That sounds awesome. And, you know, Abraham Lincoln was already, you know, a six foot five buff wrestler man. So, you know, he, he I mean, he was already a based warrior to begin with. And now he's being done as a vampire hunter while also being, you know, the most based American to ever have existed besides George Washington. Of course, of course. That sounds based. So, 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 so my idea is Abraham Lincoln War Hero, where he was fighting on the front lines with all the soldiers, doing a bunch of ridiculous nonsense. Uh, we have to do that. He suplexes Jefferson Davis into non-existence. <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't have anything else to say. I'm kind of tired after reading that for uh, about what was it, fifteen minutes? Fifteen minutes or so. Yeah, we hope you all enjoyed uh, Slash Week. Maybe we'll do another event um, uh, sometime in the future. I know Kai had poked the idea of fan in February, uh, which I guess we would have to do next February. The idea being an episode. <laughs> for all 28 days that would be pretty brutal i mean we we i mean mean, we could we could we could prep by like just like recording the fan in february episodes over the course of this year and then releasing them in february yeah that's true oh i was also gonna ask you um uh if we wanted to start releasing bi-weekly we uh we doing a uh you me and perhaps Phoenix recording an episode and uploading it on a day that isn't Friday, so we're doing it bi weekly. Sure. I'd be done for that. <clears throat> Shall we uh All right, well you heard it here, folks. We may be going bi weekly. Yeah. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Anyway. Uh, I will see you all next time. Or you'll hear us next time, I suppose. Goodbye. Bye.